ready to meet with Jesus tonight? Just wanna welcome everybody again. Thank you for coming out. I wanna welcome everybody that's watching online. We've come to meet with Jesus tonight. How many of you have come to meet with the Lord? I know I have. We came a long way, we, we long flights and everything, but I'm telling you, we're hungry for the Lord and I can feel it in the room. And I just invite you guys, even just where you are, just go ahead and just lift your hands, just close your eyes and just look to the Lord. Just turn your heart's attention and affection toward Him because He's come to meet with us tonight. I wanna read you a scripture in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And that's my prayer tonight, that Lord, by your spirit, would you allow us to seek you with all of our heart, God. So tonight, Lord, you see every heart in this place. You see every need in this room, Lord. And we just turn our hearts toward you. Holy Spirit, would you come and saturate our hearts, Lord? Would you come and soften our hearts again, Jesus? Would you mark us with your presence tonight, God? Would you change our lives forever tonight, Lord? Would not one person leave this place the same way, Lord? Would they come? Again, you guys have to agree with it. I can't agree for you. Lord, would you come, Lord, and mark hearts, and would you set them ablaze tonight for your glory, Jesus? We invite your Holy Spirit into this room tonight, Lord. And we ask that you would be glorified tonight, be magnified tonight, Jesus. We ask, Father, would you show us the Son, Lord, and Jesus, would you show us the Father tonight and bring us to one as you and the Father are one, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Would you just tell him how much you love him in this place? Would you just begin to thank him? Thank him for his cross. Thank him for his nail-pierced hands, his back, Lord, the crown of thorns. Lord, we love you. We worship you, Jesus. We lift our hearts, Lord. We lift our hands and it's a sign of surrender all over this room. And we just say, Lord, have your way. Have your way tonight in Jesus' name.
drenched in tears They laid him down On Joseph's tomb The entrance By heavy stone Messiah still In dark Oh praise the
every voice.
you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You time, just the voices, no instruments. Just sing it again, I exalt thee. Dear Jesus, we came to be with you tonight, Jesus. Move, have your way. We love you, Jesus. You're the one thing that matters to us, God. Nothing else matters, Jesus, outside of you, God. You're the reason we love our families. You're the reason we love anything, God, because you first loved us, Jesus. Your love is the one that overwhelms us, God. Your love is the one that keeps us going. Your love is the one that never leaves us or forsakes us, God. It's your love, only your love, Jesus. Your goodness, Lord, overflows, God, to a thousand generations, God. Oh, Jesus, overwhelm us tonight with your nearness, God. Let you be the only thing we desire, God. Ignite first love in our hearts tonight. Come on, just agree with that. Ignite first love in our hearts tonight, God. Blind us to anything else, God. Let us become so addicted to you, Jesus, that we have to have you morning, noon, night, always, God. That we can't rest, God, until we've been with you, God. Overwhelm us, God, with this first love. Holy Spirit, show us, show us the cross. Show us Jesus. Let us see him rightly, God. We want to see you rightly, Jesus. We love you, God. Teach us to yield. Teach us to surrender. Teach us to die, Lord. Teach us to die, Lord. 
Teach us to take up our cross daily, God. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Can we just let Jesus know how much we love him? You guys are free to go back to your seats. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Tucker, for telling me my mic was off. I appreciate that, bud. <laughs> All right, are you guys happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Who came here hungry? All right, I'm hungry too. How many people, as they're going to their seats, how many people came from outside America tonight? Anyone? Anyone just wave, I see some over here. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'm trying to... Just break up the awkwardness of them going back to their seats. Michael said, wait till they go back to their seats. Okay, I'll ask again. Who came here from overseas tonight? Just wave so we can see you. Can we welcome them? Oh, that's beautiful. Awesome. Well, I have the honor of doing the offering tonight. Oh, that, that was weak. I have the honor of doing the offering tonight. Before we do that, we just wanted to make a few quick announcements. We will be back March. We're coming to Phoenix, Arizona. The information is right there, March 22nd. I think out of all the places we've traveled in the U.S., we get asked the most, when are you coming to Phoenix, Arizona? Well, we are coming to Phoenix, Arizona, and we cannot wait to be with you. You can register. All the info is right there on your screen. And we are also looking at a venue for next month in San Diego. More info <laughs> on that to come. Stay tuned, stay up to date with us on our website, on our social pages. We will have the information for you guys on that as soon as it is locked in, amen? All right, let's get into the word of God. Go to Malachi 3. Malachi 3. I'm gonna start reading halfway through verse 7. I have been my whole life giving to the Lord, and I used to do it because I thought that is what you were supposed to do. I grew up in a Christian home, and I just thought that's what church people do. But when I was in my 20s, married, having kids of my own, I started to search the scriptures for myself, and this was the first passage that taught me what it meant to be a giver. You guys are quiet, a giver, a tither. It's an honor to give to Jesus, amen? So Mal Malachi 3, I'm gonna start at verse seven in the middle of verse seven. It says, now return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. But you ask, how can we return when we have never gone away? Should people cheat God, yet you have cheated me? But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and the offerings that are due to me. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of armies, of heaven's armies, I will open up the windows of heavens for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. I love this side of the Lord. Try it. Put me to the test. Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Then all nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Amen. That verse should excite you. It excited me when I read it for the first time. And I love what the passage says here. It says, you have robbed me in tithes and offerings. See, tithing is obedience. We all should tithe to the Lord because he gave us everything when he gave his life on that cross. Not this one, but the cross. But giving an offering 
is also when we don't give God our offering, we're cheating him. And we don't give to get, that's manipulation and that's not why we do that. We give because we get to. It's an act of worship. It's, a, it's an act of giving to the Lord. This is as much worship as what we just did a few moments ago. It's giving God our resources, our time. I love what my husband told me years ago. He said, giving to the Lord your first fruits, your best, is not only finances, it's your mourning, it's your devotion, it's your worship. It's giving him the best of all we have. And because God is so faithful, he loves to give to his children. We have three kids, they're home to, right now. They like to travel with us, maybe next time they'll be here, but there is nothing in the world I wouldn't do for them. I would never hold anything back from them if I had the ability to give it to them because I love them. This is the way God loves us. We, we get to partner with this love. And you guys might say, well, we paid a small fee to get here. I promise that did not cover our cost. You guys, again, got very quiet. It barely makes a dent because we wanted to open this up so whoever wanted to come could be here. But I'm gonna ask you tonight not to partner with Jesus' image, but to partner to, with God because we're doing this unto the Lord. We wanna continue to go tour all over the West Coast and America, wherever God takes us, but it does take money to do that. It does take money. <laughs> Carla, who helps run the ministry, is like, yeah, yeah, we know, yes. It takes money to do that. And God is so faithful. Recently, the Lord provoked Michael and I to give a sacrificial offering. And he's much better at that than I am. He would say amen out loud if he could. My jokes aren't landing. It's okay. It's okay. But we were both feeling it. And he said to me, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sow a seed right now. And I said, okay, I feel we're supposed to do that too. And God is so faithful because there is something called sowing and reaping. And through that, I wasn't expecting to get anything back. I just was being obedient, even though it was hard to let go of that money in the moment. But if God says do it, you just obey. And I kid you not, within a month, someone came up to us and said, God just told me to sow this into your life. It was more than what we had just sown recently because nothing is void in the kingdom. I look at what God is doing even here and Michael and I used to pastor here in Orange County many years ago. Our church was dead. We thought it was pointless. There was just no fruit that we saw, but we kept sowing and sowing and sowing. And I remember thinking, will we ever see anything back from all these years we've sown? Now, fast forward 20 years later, and I'm seeing what God is doing in this region through Jesus' image, because there is no gift that you give to God. Amen, yes. And the Lord reminded me of that. A few months ago, I heard the Holy Spirit say, I never forgot what you sown into this region. There's nothing forgotten by God because he sees everything, amen? And I'm just asking you to be obedient to the Lord tonight, that's all, so let's pray. Dear Jesus, it is our joy to give to you, Lord. It's our joy to give to you what never even belonged to us because everything we have is yours, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask that you speak to your children right now. You tell them, God, whatever it is you want us to give, we just wanna obey and say yes to you, Lord. It's our joy to give to your work, God. And bless your children, Lord. Take care of every need because you're a good father. We worship you in Jesus' name, amen, amen. There are many ways to give. If you need an envelope, you can just lift your hand up and one of our ushers will come and give you an envelope and then we're gonna put buckets up here and you can come to the buckets. If you're watching online and Jesus Image has blessed you and you wanna give, we encourage you as well to give. We love you so much. If you want to scan the code in the back, you, should, you can just scan the QR code right there or text that number and we'll be back in just a moment.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Can we give the Lord praise tonight? <laughs> Honored to have you. Why don't we all stand? Let's give the Lord praise one more time, and then I'm going to pray. Come on, lift your voice. Jesus, we love you. We love you. We give you all the glory. Why don't you just join hands, just not across the aisles? Oh, Lord, we love you. We give you all the praise. All the glory is yours forever and ever. And we all declare tonight, Lord, as your people, that there is no one like you. There are none beside you, none in heaven, none on the earth, none under the earth. Jesus, you stand alone. You're the righteous and holy King. You shine brighter than the sun. And we ask you tonight, Lord, by the Holy Spirit, to greatly glorify your holy name. Glorify your name. Let many who are bound by sin come running to Jesus tonight. Oh, come on, agree with me. Let many who are bound with sin in darkness come running to Jesus tonight. Let many be healed tonight, Lord, who are suffering in their bodies, in their minds, broken hearts and broken bodies, Lord. Heal them tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And Lord, help us by your mercy to give you all the glory. Every ounce of the glory is yours. And we're grateful, Lord. We come in tonight with thanksgiving for the blood, for the cross, and for your mercy. What an honor to be in your presence. We give you all the praise tonight. Let our hearts be filled with thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty and holy name. And everybody said, can we lift a praise and seal that tonight? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, one more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated. We're going to worship here for a few moments in just a second, but it's an honor to have you here. Thank you for coming. And I want to thank uh, Pastor Jensen and his entire team 
for opening Free Chapel to Jesus Image. Thank you so much. And we thank them. So grateful for the pastor's life and the work of the Holy Spirit through him and in this region. And I'm so grateful. Pastor Sam, good to see you. It's wonderful to have you. And uh, I've got some friends here. Chase, thank you for being here. Circuit Riders, I know y'all are here somewhere. Love you guys. Honored to be here with you all. Daniel Park somewhere here, I think. Daniel, good to see you. Love you. So many friends in the, this area. I just got a quick announcement. Uh, don't put it up yet, but um, we are really feeling stirred about the West Coast. And it's only intensifying. <laughs> Amazingly, only the Lord can do something like that. And, and still increase our fire for Orlando and what the Lord is doing on the other side of our nation. Uh, Bill Johnson told me years ago, as he prayed for Jesse and I, that the day would come where the two coasts would connect and that, uh, that a real covenant would be formed and that that's, that would be a sign of God moving throughout our nation. I remember hearing in the early days of the circuit riders when I would minister in that wonderful little garage. Uh, I would see the words uh, posted or taped to the wall and hear them from Brian Brent, who's gone on to be with the Lord. Orange County and Orange County will connect one day. And, and I, I, I used to hear that word in my heart. And then finally, Jess goes, when we were, you know, we're in Orlando now. She says, you do realize you pastoring in Orange County. And uh, I thought, oh my. And we're headed out to Orange County for Jesus tour. The Lord is speaking, and I've come to bring you good news. There is a mass move of the Holy Spirit that is coming your way. I, I, I thoroughly believe, and I, I'm not just saying this because I, I sense it. God is speaking to many people, us included. Uh, Southern California is about to be a city set on a hill. And... I believe it with all my heart. We're investing in prayer. We're investing financially. Um, we are, by the way, speaking of February, we are uh, looking at either San Diego or coming back to Orange County. We're still looking at venues. February's been a little difficult to find a venue. So if you've got a massive one, <laughs> or not so massive, if you've got one uh, that's not your living room, we would, <laughs> we, we'd love to come. But uh, the Lord is, is, is going to move with great glory here, and it's going to touch the entire world. It's going to touch the entire world. And so we'll be here every month at least until Jesus 24, which will be at the Anaheim Arena at the Convention Center. So you can throw that up. This is our first time ever leaving Orlando for this year-end event. We've been doing this for 10 years. And in the natural, we had no reason to leave Orlando. But God began to speak. And he said, I want you to take this out of Orlando and take this event to Southern California. Thank you, Jesus. We have already signed and put the down payment on the venue, it is locked and loaded. We are going for it. The arena portion of the events of the uh, of the conference center seats like eight to nine thousand people, and hundreds are registering already. This is a really incredible building in the history of God. Miss Coolman, Miss Coolman ministered there. The full gospel businessmen used that in their great meetings in the 70s. Pastor Benny used that many many times. Had one of the greatest youth gatherings we've ever witnessed. Uh, in, in 2003, I believe, yeah. So uh, we looked everywhere and God began to draw our hearts here. And so I wanna invite all of you to come. And so we, what we've done for the next 24 hours is we have offered a discount in the registration. So you need to tell your friends, all of you, those of you watching, all over the world. They will come from all over the world. We have over 100 nations represented at every one of these. And this, I believe, will catalyze something in the region and this new Jesus movement that we've all been feeling and hearing and declaring. Uh, it, 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 it is here and it is among us. Amen. Amen? So we'd love to have you at Jesus 24. You can scan that QR code for the next 24 hours. 
uh, to get that discount. It'd be an honor to have you. Have I forgotten anything? Okay, let's all stand. You ready to get into his presence? All right, I want you to all out loud just begin praying in the spirit for the next two minutes. Let go of yourself, let go of every inhibition, and I want to hear it. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice to the Lord. Oh, lift your voice to the Lord. Lift your voice to the Lord. That's it, that's it. It's going to be the sound of a worshiping people that will draw the presence of Jesus to this land. Oh, just let go, let go, let go, let go. Keep going. Keep singing, keep praying, sing in the spirit. Forget about everything. Lift your hands to the Lord and begin to bless His name and the Spirit. In the earth and the arm and the earth begin to hear. Stand the earth and the arm and the earth begin to hear. Don't stop. Keep going. Keep going. Lift our hands to the Lord and worship just for a moment. Lift your hands to heaven. now. Come on, everyone. Every voice. 
Sonne. Then sings my soul. Welcome your presence, Lord. Every eye closed, just look at Jesus. my soul. One more time, softly again, every eye closed. lift our hands to heaven. Father, we really have come, Lord, to be in your presence. Fill every heart. Fill this building with your glory. 
Let it be felt blocks away, Lord. We've seen you do that at home. People would come near the church, Lord, and you'd be moving blocks away and they'd feel your presence. Do that here tonight. Don't leave any of us the same. Make this your house tonight. Your tabernacle, Lord. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let your beauty fill this room. How we need your beauty again. The light of your presence. Holy is the Lord. Let a blanket of your glory just descend here. I pray that everyone would be more aware of your presence than us. Walk these aisles tonight, wonderful Savior. And touch your people tangibly. I ask you to begin now, Lord. Touch your people. That's why they've come. They haven't come for Jesus' image. They've come for Jesus. Touch your people. Touch them. In the deepest places, Lord. Undeniably touch them. Give us, Lord, the gift of tears tonight. Let them flow. Let them flow, Lord, from hearts that are overflowing with gratitude too deep for words. Catch us up into your beauty. Now I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that as I begin to preach the gospel, I plead the blood over every person, over every family, over everyone watching online. I plead the blood and may your authority and love rule and reign here tonight. I thank you in advance for holy desperation. You will have your harvest, Lord, and you will have it here tonight in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to lift the most sacrificial radical praise you know the living. Emma, will you stay? I'm going to begin sharing the gospel here, and as I do, I'm going to ask that, unless it's an emergency, that nobody move. And if you have children, make sure they're not doing backflips up the aisle or throwing footballs with their sibling. You would think I've seen that before. I have recently, actually. <laughs> How we approach the word determines what we receive from the word. I pastored here for years and lived here for years. My wife lived here for, I don't know, 12 years. I know where we're at. I'm just so thankful God has not forgotten about this place. The church is alive and well in Southern California. And it's about to become more alive than ever. However, it's also the land of please me, yeah. preach to me, yeah. build churches around my needs. 
It's the land of the 70 minute service. And I came to crucify that thing. It's a devil. It's what that is. It's, it is humanism. May it die in the shadow of Calvary. You know, the clock did not die on the cross. Jesus did. In theory, we all say we want his presence. But we usually stop our meetings before he's even come in. And I know you're all here because you want to move with the Spirit. But that requires death. I don't think we've had a service under three hours at Jesus Image for five years. And 80% of the crowd is Gen Z. I find it amazing that we assume to think we know what they want. I'll tell you what they want. They want Jesus. That's what they want. So let's go into his presence tonight. I want to talk to you tonight about seeing Jesus. Take your Bibles to John chapter 12. We're going to begin in verse 20. Let me also say that it's not necessarily more holy to have a long service if it's dead. (laughs) If it's not anointed, just have them short because long dead ones are the worst. I mean, is there anything more valuable than him? John 12, 20. The scripture says, let's pray first. Holy Spirit, pierce us with your holy word. Grip us. We sense your glory and presence here already. Have your way, Lord. Let your word bear fruit and deliver people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. John 12, 20, I'll read through verse 33. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came to worship at the feast. Greeks love food. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying... Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, say dies, Dies. it produces much grain. And now the Lord begins to define glory and death. Listen very carefully. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, Him, my Father, will honor. Now Jesus begins to show us what it looks like to serve the Lord. Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came. Listen very carefully. 
I came, let me read it out of the New King James. I, I, I really love this. But for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Hmm. Therefore the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all peoples to myself. For too long we've been telling people that that has to do with singing. It has nothing to do with singing. Verse 33 tells us what verse 32 is all about. This he said signifying by what death he would die. And the people answered him, we have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. And how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? This is the cry of every seeking heart. Sirs, we wish to see Jesus. For too long, we've been showing people what Christian corporations look like rather than showing them Jesus. We have made a home for people while kicking Jesus out of his own house. This generation is crying out what these Greeks cried out. We wish to see Jesus. Gen Z is crying out to see Jesus. Young and old, the heart is designed to behold the Lord. And I love how verse 34 ends. Who is this son of man? California is crying out to see Jesus. Broken marriages in this room. Your greatest need is to see Jesus. Broken relationships. Your greatest need is to see Jesus. Man's greatest need is to see this Son of Man. And let's just be really clear. The only answer for our nation is to see the Lord. Be sure your phones are silenced, please. We've been talking about a Jesus movement for, I don't know, 15, 20 years. Praise God. <laughs> but it's not going to come by trying to recreate marketing and branding that looks like we're in the 60s. Now our font is the same font of the Jesus Revolution on every flyer. Now there's nothing sinful about that, but that is not the fruit of a Jesus movement. We actually need Jesus. The real person. We need a glorious church to arise 
who is stuck staring at the beauty of the sun. Just addicted to the man from Galilee. Not trying to recreate what somebody else paid a price for 50 years ago. I deeply value it. I'm a product of it. Pastor Benny was saved in the Jesus movement. I'm sure many of you in this room were saved in the Jesus movement. But when none of us stopped to ask how it actually happened, well, it didn't happen by copying the last movement's font. It came because sons and daughters heard about the God of their forefathers. And something in them began to stir like it stirred in me 15 years ago. As grateful as I am to hear about the stories of those who impacted me, I've got to get my own story. We just all got to die. There's no way in outside the cross. The cross is the on-ramp to the river of the Holy Spirit. Say, I wish to see Jesus. Say it again. I wish to see Jesus. If we're going to see the Lord... We must not only look at him if we're going to see him. Take your Bibles to Exodus chapter 3. Once I give the invitation tonight, and maybe as I'm preaching, I'm telling you, I feel an anointing tonight that I haven't felt out here ever. The last time we were here, we were here was glorious, but I, I feel the electric power of the Holy Spirit coursing through me tonight. And as the word of God is released, if you feel like you need to get down here and offer him your life fully, you will not be interrupting me. Within the preaching of the gospel rests the power unto salvation. That's what Paul said. Listen, listen. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is, it is the power of God unto salvation. He didn't say the gospel is unto making a bad day a little better. Or making our unhappiness a bit more happy. Or adding just a little more blessing to what is lacking. No, he says that within the gospel message, the power unto salvation rests. Yes. Salvation includes your spirit, your soul, and your body. One day when Jesus returns in the mighty resurrection of the church, his children will receive a glorified body. There's much more to salvation than just our sins being washed away, which is vital and beautiful. But I don't think we realize the power, the magnitude, and the beauty of what it means when we say that the gospel carries the power of God unto salvation. Tonight as I'm preaching, the power of the Holy Spirit will begin to move through this room and people will be transferred from the kingdom of darkness and be conveyed into the kingdom of his glorious life. People will be raised from the dead. That's what the gospel does. It shatters the grave. It empties the grave of the soul. And that's why it's vital that we know how to hear the word of the Lord. How you come to him determines what you receive from him. Jesus carries the spirit without measure. But what we receive depends on how we approach him. That's the whole point of Mark chapter 4. He who, he, he who hears, let him hear. He who has a little receives less, he who hears much gets more. The person who leans in the most tonight gets the most out of the word tonight. Demons are trembling 
as the gospel go, goes forth tonight. Bones are rattling as the gospel goes forth tonight. Heaven is watching, hell is shaking. As the mystery of the beautiful gospel goes forth. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And I love that. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. And then Moses said, I will now turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. When he says your name twice, it's a big deal. <laughs> and he said, here I am. That's the only worthy response, friends. Here I am. When God calls your name, you say, here I am. Why don't you say that out loud tonight? Here I am. No, no, really, from the depths of your heart. Are you willing to offer the Lord your life tonight in this room? Say, here I am. God hears that. Then he said, the Lord said this to Moses, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off, your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. And moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. I want you to look at the beginning of this passage. It says, so he looked. Say looked. And behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside to see. Say, first I must look. Then he gives me the gift of seeing. We'll never see the Lord until we believe he's worthy of a look. And I'm not talking about a physical vision. If that comes, thank you, Jesus. But that's not what I'm talking about tonight. If Jesus cannot trust us to look upon him, he will never trust us to truly see him. And even while I'm speaking, there's something within our flesh that draws us into distraction. Do you realize who I'm talking about tonight? I'm talking about the Alpha and Omega. Yet in our weakness, we are prone to think elsewhere, to look elsewhere with our heart. When sin is dominating us, it's because we've looked away from Jesus. Mixture, it's because we're not looking at Jesus. Bondage, because we are not looking at Jesus. And you don't need to technically look at the devil, you can just look at you. Life without Jesus is simply a life of just looking at ourselves. And what did Isaiah say to the people of Israel? He said, you have gone astray. And then he defines it, you have gone your own way. Astray is always our own way. And our own way is always astray. Something I believe the church must repent of is the gospel of man. The doctrine of men, which by nature is a doctrine of demons. There's nothing more evil than using the scripture to elevate man rather than Jesus. We've told the world, church is just about people. No, church is not just about people. The church is a people who are all about Jesus. The days need to return 
where the church is inconvenienced. There are any pastors in the room. Stop scheduling services to make them more convenient. America is overly convenient. Let's pay a price again to get into his glory. Jesus is worth waiting in line for. Jesus is worth missing a meal. Many of us could use a missed meal here and there. We need, listen, we need a holy inconvenience. Fasting is inconvenient. Getting up at three for the fourth watch, that's not convenient. But it's glorious. Say, first I must look. Then he'll trust me to see. Friend, listen, listen, listen very carefully. Never underestimate the power of looking at Jesus. I'm going to say that again. I, we have not given our life at Jesus' image, telling the world to say no to drugs, though they should. We, we're, we're watching a generation set free, truly, and be used of God. But my mission isn't telling them to stop watching porn, though they should. But what we're offering, the best we know how, is the epicenter of freedom, the true wellspring, which is to look at the Lamb of God. The greatest way to forget about us is to stare at Jesus. In Numbers 21, you don't mind the Bible here in Orange County, do you? In Numbers 21, verse 4 through 9. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my heart is stirring. How many of you sense the presence of the Lord? Thank you, Lord. Increase your glory here. Numbers 21, verse 4. Then they, the children of Israel, journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Can I just say, Southern California, please, this isn't just for Southern Cal, this is for everyone watching. Spend more time monitoring your own heart than criticizing leaders. We've got enough junk in our own heart. It's time to store up mercy, guys. The day will come where we'll need it. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? This is what they began to say, the children of Israel, to Moses. For there is no food and water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. Heavenly manna, the food of angels, they began to call it worthless. Do you realize as I'm preaching the gospel, the Holy Spirit is offering you heavenly bread? The word of God is true food. In just a few moments, we're going to receive the body and blood of Jesus. Do you know his body is true food? That's what he said. He said his blood is true drink. May God awaken us to the glory of just hearing a scripture read to us. It's true food. It's what Jesus said. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus said when he took the bread and broke it, he said, take and eat it. This is my body that is broken for you. But when we fall asleep, friends, when it becomes about us, we begin to call the food of angels worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people. And many of the people of Israel died. 
Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. For those of you in this room who are struggling with shame and condemnation, cycles of sin, you may even feel guilty being in this room right now. You might be a pastor, you might be a missionary, you might be a musician, you might be a mom or a dad or just a teenager who is stuck in repetitious sin. Jesus wants to set you free tonight. Listen, the serpents will be taken away from you. Did you hear what I said? The serpents will be removed from your life. The Bible says, so Moses prayed for the people. How did the serpents leave? Then the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent, speaking of Jesus becoming our sin, and set it on a pole, speaking of the cross. And it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. Say looks. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was if a serpent had bitten anyone when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Say look and live. Look. Say it, come on, like you mean it. Look. Say it again, look and live. Look. Never underestimate the power of looking at Jesus. If you look tonight, you will live. And what does he look like? Hmm. He looks like this. He's the extended Christ. The one who's spread out, extended, reconciling God and man. This may be shocking to you that I even have a cross. Well, that's shocking to me. What have we replaced Christ crucified with, friends? Life application. There's not a devil in this room more powerful than Christ crucified. Not the devil himself can withstand the power of the tree. An entire nation bitten by serpents. As many of you have felt the sting and the fire of sin. Sin is not a bad thing. Sin is a death sentence. It's much more than a bad thing. Sin is not a weakness. Sin is a death sentence. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God. The gift of God, Paul says to the Romans, is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. I'm not telling you just to look at a mere man or some vague idea of Jesus. Because remember what Jesus said, when I am lifted up, when I am nailed to the cross, I will draw all peoples to myself. The power of Christ crucified is about to rip through the state of California like a fiery whirlwind. And we will return, we will return to the preaching of our fathers, to the preaching of Jesus. Did Jesus not say in the Gospel of John, when I am lifted up, you will know that I am he? He didn't say when I multiply bread for you, you will know that I am he. That's what we've done for too long for the church. If I do enough for you, maybe you'll see Jesus rightly. It doesn't say that when I walk on water, you will know that I'm he. It says when I'm lifted up, when I die in public, naked, on a rugged wooden cross, in that moment your eyes will open and you will see this man as the great I am. By the way he dies. Yes. By the way he dies. And if we want the world to see Jesus, friends, 
It's going to come through the doorway of death to self. It's the power of the cross that vanquishes devils. It's the power of the cross that brings a cleansing to the conscience. Pastor Benny recently did a, uh, it was a while back, but it was a pastor's conference. There were 5,000 people there, and he, he did a show of hands for the pastors. How many of you have not read the Bible from cover to cover? It was half the crowd. Half the crowd. I won't do a show of hands tonight just for the sake of when I get to Pastor Benny's age, I'll do all that stuff. But <laughs> right now I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm too nice. That's why the devil's winning. That's why he messes with you. Because he sees a vacancy sign on you. You take this holy word and you interpret this word through the power of Calvary. This becomes the lens by which you look at every single verse. And that word begins to dwell richly within you. And you are so filled with the bread of life that the devil can't get in. And friend, if it's dominating you, if sin is dominating you, you've looked elsewhere. Look to Jesus tonight. Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. Joel, help me please, very softly. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. If you have your Bibles, I want you to look at that. Tonight, the lights are going to go on. And darkness is going to flee. I'm hearing that passage in my soul tonight. Who is this King of glory? He's the Lord, strong and mighty. Open up, ye everlasting doors. Open up, ye everlasting gates, and the King of glory shall come in. The one who plunders the grave, the one who rescues the dead. This is Jesus. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. How do we do that? Looking unto Jesus. Say that, looking unto Jesus. Close your eyes and say that. Looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. What's he like? Paul describes it. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. What will you see when you look at Jesus? The cross bearer. Jesus refuses any vision of him that is separate from Calvary. Don't you remember Peter? When Jesus says, who do men say that I am? Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Do you remember that? And then Jesus tells Peter right after that, the Son of Man must go and die. Jesus is saying, you want to see me rightly? Do you want to know what glory looks like? It looks like me carrying my cross. And for too long, we've been looking at glory as a sign and wonder. That might be a manifestation. But the most glorious vision you could ever have is the cruciform and risen Lamb. Yes. The one who comes to die for the world. And that's what I've come to tell you about. Pick those keys up just a little, please. Emma, could you help me softly? Friend, listen to me. Listen to me. Many of you, I'm looking at your eyes. You're shocked by this preaching. Not because you disagree. Maybe you do. I pray for you. This is the Holy Gospel. This is the Gospel. But many of you 
are shocked on the inside because you're hearing the gospel for the first time. You've grown up in church, many of you, but you've never really heard the gospel. You heard God has a plan for you. Yes, that's true, but that is not the gospel. The gospel is simply this. That Jesus came, born of a virgin, by the Holy Spirit. That he lived a perfect and holy life and taught the words of his Father. That he healed the sick, raised the dead, cleansed the lepers, cast out devils, preached the acceptable year of the Lord. That he suffered in his passion in our place to reveal who he really is. That he was nailed to the cross shed his holy and precious blood to make an atonement for you, to wash away the sin, to take your place, to take your death, to take your judgment. He was buried to take your burial so that when you close your eyes, which is coming, friend, it's coming. There's nothing you can do to get away from it. Nothing. The years will speed up as you age, I promise you. It is coming. It's coming. And the day will come where it is time to breathe your last let me tell you what assurance you want. is that Jesus took your death and therefore you can smile when you breathe your last because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Jesus, yes, thank you, Lord. Jesus was buried. He took your burial and he was raised from the dead because the grave could not hold the author of life. And he's raised from the dead to prove he is the Holy Son of God who is sinless. And 40 days later, he ascended to the right hand of the Father, conquering every prince and power, elevating above them to the highest place. Hallelujah. And so today, at the right hand of the Father, is seated the divine God-man. Whoever lives to intercede for us so that when we mess it up, we have the Son of God praying to his Father by the Spirit. And to cap it all off, he has poured out his same Spirit upon us and in us and is coming back again to judge the living and the dead. That's the gospel. That's the gospel of the Lord Jesus, friend. And listen to me very carefully. When he returns or when you breathe your last, you will be one of two parties, his enemy or his bride. And I beg you with every ounce of love in my heart tonight, I beg you, do not play with your soul. If there's an ounce of doubt in you, don't play with your soul. You attending church, you attending a growth track, it does not mean you are born again. I am a local pastor, you should, attur you should attend church. You should be part of a discipleship community, but you can be in church and not be his. The proof is not how many podcasts you listen to, how many Jesus Image YouTube worship moments. We're grateful that you watch, but that is not the proof of your salvation. Let me tell you the proof. It's his residence inside of you that is proven through victory over sin and death. That's the proof. That's what the Bible calls the proof. Victory over sin. Jesus said, he who sins is a slave to sin. And the scripture says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You can be free tonight. You can shake off those grave clothes and come out in newness of life. Not changed, resurrected. Much better. Hallelujah. I want you to ponder this for a moment. You're in a house of mercy tonight. The day will come where the door of the ark will close. Please, please do not gamble your eternity. With every head bowed and eye closed, no one moving. I'm gonna to speak to two groups of people tonight. Those who are bound with sin, you know it. You're sick of it. You feel the conviction, the conviction of the Holy Spirit upon you. You want to be free. You want to come to Jesus. You want to give him your life. 
I can tell you beyond the shadow of a doubt that before you were ever born, the Lord knew you'd be in that seat tonight. He said, before I formed you, I knew you. You come out of that darkness tonight into the loving arms of Jesus who died for you. The second group I want to talk to is the group who's gone to sleep. That fire's not burning like it did. His word doesn't mean what it meant to you. Your time in prayer has been replaced by worldly things. The fires of first love have been quenched. They are flickering. I want you to hear the words of Jesus. He says, return to your first love or I will put the lampstand out. If I'm speaking to anybody in this room tonight, and you know it, I want you to lift your hand quickly without hesitation. Thank you, Lord. I want everyone to stand. If you raise your hand, listen. Or you wish you did. This is the night. Do not gamble your eternity. Get down here right now and offer your entirety to Jesus. If I was speaking to anybody here in those two groups, if you raise your hand and you wish you did, get down here. Run down here quick. Don't hit anybody as you run. Get down here. Come on, give the Lord all the praise. We're going to see this throughout this state. Thousands upon thousands flooding to Jesus. Come on, give the Lord praise. Give the Lord all the glory. Come, give your life to Jesus tonight. Give your life to Jesus. Oh, the Lord knows my heart. I, I have no need to get another person down here to feel better about me. But I do feel the heart of Jesus. The tears are already flowing as the Holy Spirit. Pick up those, that, 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 those strings a little bit there, Emma. If you need to get down here, you get down here. Come down here. Be real with God. There are, there are people in the ministry who've been living a double life. Get down here now. There are missionaries who've been living a life that's secret. Get down here. Get down here. Don't you dare. The Bible says that don't rush to be a teacher. The judgment is more severe upon those. Some of you have been leading in ministry or sharing the gospel and you're living a double life. You want to be free tonight. Come. Come. Step out of it. Musicians, worship leaders, step out of that miry clay come into the light of Jesus tonight some of you have been in church so long you've had just a little bit of Jesus all these years and your heart is dead get down here hallelujah you know what guys you, you out there in your seats can you just stretch your hands and begin praying in the spirit over these people God is touching them he's falling upon them Come on, out loud, just begin to pray. Chase, we're going to see this all over. All over California. All over America. All over. All over. People running to the true Jesus. Pray, church, pray. Come on. Get in there. Pray, pray, pray for them. Look, look, they're, they're lined up in the aisles, giving their lives to the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. I want you to pray for them, that God would touch them, literally touch them tonight, genuinely, and change our life. Holy, 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 holy. Is the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Everybody who came forward, would you look at me for a moment? Tonight, listen, tonight, Jesus is here. I said, Jesus is here, church. He's here. He promised to be here. Tonight, 
you are going to the best you know how offer your life to the Lord Jesus Christ you're going to almost present your heart in a sense to the Lord and say take all I am and the Bible says that if we come to him he will by no means cast us away the Bible says has he who formed the eye can he not see you has he who planted the ear, can he not hear you? Jesus sees you tonight right where you're at. You young lady right here who's weeping, Jesus sees you tonight. And when you begin to pray, he will hear you. And he promised to hear us. And what I can promise you is this, that if we give our lives to Jesus and say, take my life, this is a prayer he loves to answer. He's promised to answer. He said, come unto me, all you who are weary, you, young man. I see the fatigue in your eyes, the weariness, the fatigue in life. He said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Rather than carrying your own sin for so long, you feel heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. Isn't that what all of you want? You want rest? He said, take my yoke upon you. Take it. Take my way. Take my teaching. Take my way of life upon you. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. In other words, you don't have to wash away your sin anymore. You don't have to be the power source of your life. He says, I'll be that for you. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. You want to know what Jesus is like? He's gentle. And he's lowly in heart. He's gentle and lowly. So we're going to talk to him now. And he will hear you. Are you ready? Would you close your eyes and lift your hands to heaven? Church, I'm going to ask you to stretch your hands towards these precious people. And I want us all to pray this out loud in full faith, looking straight at Jesus. Say this, Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight having sinned against you. I know I've sinned and I confess it tonight. But you promised that if I would confess my sin, that you are faithful and just to forgive my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Wash me in the holy blood of Jesus. I repent of my sin. I turn from my sin. I turn from this world. I renounce the devil himself and I give my entire life to the Lord Jesus Christ and I declare that you Lord Jesus are the Holy Son of God that you suffered that you died on the cross shed your precious blood to take away my sin and take my death and to give me new life. I believe that you've been raised from the dead and you will return again in glory. You are the Holy Son of God, the very King of Kings. Are you ready now? You ready? Say this, take my life. Say it again, take my life. Take my life, Lord Jesus. Receive my life as an offering, as a living sacrifice. For you are worthy of my life. And I receive your life. Now church, out in your seats, I want you to stretch your hands and agree with what I'm about to pray right now. You who are up front, just receive. Say this, Heavenly Father, Fill me with your spirit. 
send forth your spirit. Empower me with the Holy Spirit that I might be a witness for Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just gently pray in the Spirit out there in your seats? You who are up front, just receive now. Just receive. The blessed power of the Holy Spirit come upon you all. The blessed power of the Holy Spirit come upon all of you. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill them, fill them, fill them from head to toe. Fill them. Just pray out there, guys. Just pray out loud. May the blessed power of the Holy Spirit come upon you and clothe you and anoint you. Holy, 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 holy. Come, wonderful Lord. Just close your eyes and receive. The Lord's touching so many of you up here. You don't have to strive and beg. Just receive right now. Let your precious presence, Father, come upon them, I pray. Let your power flow. Let your power flow. Touch these young people too, Lord. Touch the children. Holy, 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 holy. Keep praying, guys. Keep praying out there. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Rachel, just come stand behind her. Watch those glasses there too. Keep praying out there. Just talk to the Lord. Give me your hand. Lord, let your blessed power come upon her. Feel her. Wash her memory. Wash her memory. Let your power flow through her and use her for your name's sake. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. The Lord is here. Praise you, Lord. Guys, just look at the Lord right now. Everyone in the building, just look at Jesus. Aaron, would you come up here? Praise you. all the glory just grab your mic and come here there's something about that name every hand lifted the Lord is here
voice of kings and kingdoms. Kings and kingdoms, they'll all pass away, but there's something about that name. Again, Jesus. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that thing. Tell him, Master. Master. Bless the Lord. Close your eyes. Bless the Lord. These people are being filled with the Spirit right in front of me. You ask Him now. You ask Him to fill you, no matter where you're at. Even if you're not at the altar, ask Him. Ask Him all over the room. Say, Lord, touch me. Touch my life. Thank you, wonderful Holy Spirit. Prepare your people. Prepare your people. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, keep praying in the Spirit. Time to forget about everything. Holy, 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 
wonderful Holy Spirit. To be a sanctuary. Pure and holy. Come up here, team, the entire worship team. And with I'll be a sanctuary. Sanctuary. Oh, forget about everything now. Lift it a little. Lord, prepare me. And Lord, prepare me. That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing in this region. To be a sanctuary. Make it your prayer. Pure and holy. Tried and true. Tried. Thank you. 
delivering people. Keep singing, don't stop, don't stop worshiping. The whole place, the whole place. Surround her with broken young people. I see young people all around you, little, little, little young people in their teens, needing, needing the light of the Holy Spirit. Father, mark her tonight. Receive, young lady, the power of the Holy Ghost that He might use you for His name's sake. Fill her. Fill her. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Let many young people be marked through her life. Mantiere, fenti ora, ravantiere, rebenti e Menti el pequenti el pequenti Again, Lord, prepare me. Southern California. Pure and holy. Tried and true.
to distribute communion do they all have it make sure stay where you're at if you've come up I don't want you to move don't lose this flow guys keep your eyes on Jesus don't talk to one another again Lord prepare me this is the prayer for the church right now. Pure and holy. Pure and holy. seats you can be seated just keep worshiping in your seats Lord prepare me Has everyone been served? Do you have the elements? Does anybody not have the elements? Would you lift your hand? Two right here. Yeah. Someone help this young lady. Thank you, Nathan. Before we receive, Holy Communion, I want you to realize something. We come to the table of the Lord in faith. We serve a miracle working Savior. I said we serve a miracle working Savior. How many of you have come with a sickness in your body? Would you just wave both hands? There is healing tonight in his presence half of you believe that there is healing tonight in his presence Jesus is our healing could this man just could we help him find a seat thank you 
we come to the table in faith. It is wrong to approach the table without faith. Faith in Jesus himself being present at the table. Where Jesus is the actual meal that we are about to partake of. In just a few moments, you'll take this bread and it will touch your mouth. Don't receive yet. Just, just, you don't have to, don't prepare it yet. Just, I'm doing it. You don't need to. In just a few moments, you're going to take this bread after we pray and you're going to receive the body of the Lord Jesus. And this spiritual food is going to touch your natural body. And there is enough power in the covenant of Jesus to destroy anything that is causing you suffering in your body. The Bible teaches us that on the night the children of Israel were delivered in Exodus chapter 12, they received the instruction to eat of the Lamb of God. And the Bible teaches that night that as they feasted upon the Lamb and consumed the flesh of the Lamb, that they all left Egypt free and void of sickness. And the Psalms tell us there wasn't a feeble one among them. In a city of, or I should say a nation of three million people, not a weak person out of three million, let alone being sick. There wasn't a weak 90-year-old in the camp. Say Jesus' resurrection and my life. Say it again, Jesus' resurrection and my life. That's what he said. He said, I am resurrection and life. If he were only resurrection, the moment he raised you when you were born again, you'd die a second later. But since he is resurrection and life, he raises us and keeps us. Now his life is more powerful than the worst of diagnoses. Than the worst of reports. There's more power in the body and blood of Jesus than any sickness can withstand. Sickness of the mind, sickness in your marriage, sickness in your body, sickness in your joints, diabetes, glaucoma, eczema, cancer, heart disease, arthritis, all of it bows its knee to the heavenly king. All of it, all of it, and the heavenly king sits at the table with us and is our food at the same time. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, For I also received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do you realize what I just read to you? The power of the new covenant rests in the very blood of Jesus. And this meal is the ATM code to unlock the bounty, the bountiful treasure of the new covenant. Rest in this meal. Say, thank you, Jesus. Say, I'm coming out of Egypt tonight. Say, sickness is staying in Egypt. Sickness is staying in Egypt. 
Verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And for this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. In other words, receiving communion improperly can bring sickness and death. That is scary. But the flip side is incredibly beautiful. It means to receive communion properly can bring healing and life. And tonight, we discern the Lord's body in this room. We discern the Lord's blood. And based on the Word of God, Jesus still heals today. He said, I am the Lord, present tense, who heals you. Let's take the bread, just hold it. Before we do, I want you to examine your heart. Ask the Lord if there's anything there that needs to go. Repent of whatever you need to repent of. Ask for forgiveness. If there's an op between you and a brother, fix it. Commit to fixing it. Forgive the people who've hurt you the most. Forgive those who've betrayed you. Forgive those who've abused you. Forgive those who've destroyed your heart. Forgive those who left you. Forgive those who abandoned you. Forgive them. Forgive them. The Bible says, though our sins were as scarlet, he makes us white as snow. We all were like scarlet. Release them tonight, church. Release every single one of them. Take this bread and hold it up because Jesus was lifted on the tree. Let's do that together. Now, for those of you who are sick, in just a moment, you will receive this precious bread, the bread of life, the body of the Lord Jesus. And I want you now to offer your sickness to God. Just say, Lord, here it is. Take it, take it, take it. It's as simple as you saying, heal me, Jesus. Everyone who needs healing, just say, heal me, Jesus. Holy Lord, we hold this bread up because you were nailed to the cross. We lift the bread because your precious body, the veil of your flesh, was lifted on Mount Calvary. And tonight, Lord, we break the bread together. Break it, church. Don't receive yet, just break it. We break the bread as we lift it in your presence. And you, Lord, received the broken body on the cross so that our bodies would be made whole. Your back was torn so that our life would be healed, our bodies would be healed. Even now, Lord, before we receive, I ask that the power of the Holy Spirit would be released in this room to bring healing to your inheritance, your children. That those watching online, Lord, that your blessed healing power would flow through those cameras and touch everyone watching on every iPhone, in front of every television, in the hospital rooms like happened in San Diego, Lord. Bring them out of those hospital rooms. Blessed Holy Spirit, come upon this moment as we prepare to receive your holy body, Jesus. And as your people receive your body, heal their bodies. In Jesus' mighty name, receive. Thank you, Lord. 
Take the cup. Precious Jesus. All eyes on Jesus now. Lord, we lift the cup in honor and wonder that your word says the life of the flesh is in the blood. And as we receive the precious blood of Jesus tonight, let the life of the blessed Holy Spirit move and flow and bring life and healing. Your word says when the enemy comes in, like a flood, you'll raise up a standard. That standard is the holy blood of Jesus. And tonight, by faith, I plead the blood over every one of you. I plead the blood over those who are sick and bound and oppressed with devils and demons. I plead the blood Every tumor, go in Jesus' name. Every cyst, go in Jesus' name. All pain in every joint, go in the name of Jesus. Blockage in the arteries, go in Jesus' name. Pain in the chest, go in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Heal your people as we prepare to receive the blood of Jesus. Wash us and cleanse us, Holy Lord. You said this blood is shed for the remission of sin. Fill us as we receive. Thank you for the blood. Heal your people. Receive in faith. Offer the Lord your body now. Everyone who needs a healing, offer the Lord your body. Many of you, if you're like me right now, many of you feel the tangible power of God. I do. And I believe that's happening because it's happening to many of you. I do believe that. If you're sick in body and you feel his power, just yield. Yield your body to the Lord. Just say, Lord, my body is yours. Heal me. Now I'd like everyone to stand, please. And if you need a healing in your body, I'm going to ask you to just lift your hand. Nobody moving around, just stand and stay still. Raise your hand if you have a a sickness that you need healing from. Okay, so many of you. If you see somebody next to you that has their hand up, I want you to kindly ask them, may I pray with you? And I'd like, if possible, at least two people agreeing with each person. Don't lay hands on them yet. Just ask them. We have to flow in the Spirit now. Just, just please follow my lead. Just simply ask them, may I pray with you? Now I want you to ask them what's wrong. And for those of you who are telling the person what's wrong with you, this isn't time for a testimony. Just name the issue. It should take one sentence. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Now I want you to just put your hand on their shoulder. And I want you to, in the name of Jesus, bind and rebuke that sickness now. I'm going to lead you. Are you ready? Let's go. Come on. Tell it to go. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all sickness goes in Jesus' name. That's right. All sickness goes in Jesus' name. 
Every pain goes in the mighty name of Jesus. All sickness goes in Jesus' mighty name. All of it goes. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Lord rebuke every disease, all pain, anxiety, fear, depression, injured necks, be whole in Jesus' name. Your knees be whole in Jesus' name. The Lord is healing someone's knee. Move those knees. Somebody's back is being healed. I'm seeing a back. May the blessed power of the Holy Spirit go through that back right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody's jaw. Lord, thank you for healing that jaw right now in Jesus' name. Someone to my left, you have an incredible like skin irritation to my left. May the blessed power of the Lord come upon you in Jesus' name. Behold. I don't need to call it out. You just receive it. You receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive your healing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus. There's someone over here to my right, just sing gently, guys. There's someone over here to my right. I see a, a pain right near the belly button, like in the abdomen. Lord Jesus, let your healing power flow through that vessel now and heal them. And let a healing wave rip through this state. Hold on, Darren, wait a second. Yeah, keep playing that, David. Someone's shoulder is being made whole now. Someone who has pain, it goes from the back of the neck down to the middle of the spine. Just everyone very quietly receive, very quiet. Someone who, who uh, has pain going down from the top of the back of the neck down to the middle, the middle of the spine. It's like an, an upper back pain. And right now you feel like a fire, a heat going down your body. Receive the blessed power of the Holy Spirit upon you. Just begin to move it, move it by faith. Somebody's arm, I believe it's the right arm. I don't know for sure, but I, it's somebody's arm it's been incredibly painful. Now you feel like a, almost like a cool touch upon your, upon your arm. Go ahead and move it now. Somebody's had an incredibly painful sore throat. Somehow it's been, uh, it's right in here. It's been, it's connected to your thyroid. And, and life has been so difficult since this condition started. Holy Spirit, thank you for what you're doing in them. Thank you for your body and blood, Jesus. I see a lady's hand that's, that's been experiencing painful arthritis. Go ahead and move your hand right now. Move it now. You're going to feel that hand loosen up, just like I saw in San Diego. The crippled fingers, they were loosening in San Diego completely. Lord, let your healing power flow through that hand now. 
somebody's circulation in the left leg. Go ahead and move that leg. Go ahead and move that leg and don't wait for me to call it out. I'm not going to call out everyone. The Lord is much bigger than that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Would you just begin to pray in the Spirit all over the room? All the glory. All the glory. All the glory. Somebody's ear or ears towards the back of the, of the seating area. Somebody's ear. I don't know what's wrong with it. The Lord is healing those ears. Somebody here has been suffering from incredible sinus issues for years. You feel like a clearing taking place. Blessed are you, Lord. The sleeplessness to my right. Somebody's been struggling with sleep issues, insomnia to my right. The, the, the peace of God is coming upon you tonight. I give my beloved rest, the scripture says. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can we just gently just look up to heaven and begin to thank the Lord? Don't clap, just begin to thank him out loud. Thank you, Jesus. Give you all the glory, all the glory, all the glory. All the glory belongs to you, wonderful Lord. If you feel a difference in your body, you felt the power of God come on you. Or you begin to move. And by the way, if you haven't begun to move, and you had pain in your body, I want you to begin to move right now. Try something you could not do. Go ahead and move by faith. This is vital to your healing experience that you would move by faith. Do something you couldn't do. But if you feel the power, the presence of the Lord upon you, the pain is gone or that condition is gone or a symptom is gone or lessened significantly. In fact, somebody here has suffered in the front of your head with, 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 with like a headache condition. I don't know if it's a migraine condition, but I feel that pressure. Uh, I, can feel, I can see it leaving in the name of Jesus and you feel the power of the Holy Spirit. I feel like warm oil coming down your head. The Lord Jesus and by his stripes you are healed. I said by the stripes of Jesus you are healed. If the Lord touched your body, you feel that touch, you feel that difference, I want you to raise your hand all over this room and wave them at me. Wave them at me. Wave. Wow. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Okay, here's what I want to do. It's 10.06. Who cares? Jesus is healing people. I want everyone to sit down. And you can go back to your seats, those who've come forward. I want to take at least 10 testimonies before we go. First, can we give the Lord all the glory? All the glory. Keep playing. Keep playing. Quickly, quickly, grab your seat. Grab your seat. Quickly, grab your seat. Thank you, Jesus. All right, guys, I'll need help. Uh, Raul, you want to help me? Uh, Carson, you can help too. How many mics do we have? Okay, yeah, quickly, quickly, get to your seats. Can we thank the Lord one more time? May a healing wave flood Orange County, Southern California, and Phoenix, and Nevada. May a healing wave of God's power just flow from this region and in this region. Raise your hand again. Many of you, it looked like dozens and dozens. You felt the power of the Holy Spirit come upon you to heal you. Lift your hands and wave. If you know the Lord's healed you, I want you to wave your hand. All right, Raul, find me one. Where is Raul? Okay, lift, put him back up until he gets to you. If you know in your body you felt the Lord heal you, would you stand up, please? What happened? Us. Uh, I had pain in my knee and the Lord just took it away. I can, I can do a full squat now. And How long have you had that? I've had it for four months. Four months. Okay, hold on. What happened to it? Um, I was playing a game and I pulled the ligament and I wasn't able to squat deep and past then my other knee dislocated and now both of them are completely healed. What, what happened tonight? Tonight? 
I just felt so much heat in my left knee and then just circulation to where my legs are like shaking, but it's When it's did it happen? Well, right now. <laughs> during communion or after? It was during communion, I received it and then one of my brothers prayed for me and then it just happened. The Lord gave it to me and I received it. And you, you couldn't do squats before? I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it and I had so much pain doing it. And you did it earlier just? I did it earlier. Can you step out in the aisle? If you want to do it, you can do it. Wow. And you have no pain? No pain. No For pain. four months you haven't been able to do that? For four months. It's been so hard. Come on guys, give the Lord all the praise. Thank you Lord. Is there anyone else near, near him? Anyone else near him that had your hand up? Okay, anybody here? And many of you in this section. Yeah, yeah, there's one right, right there, Row. Where's Carson? Is he over on that side? Okay. What happened to you? Oh, oh hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm a pastor at Grace Korean Church in Fullerton. I came here with my students. And, you know, she's pretty shy, so I'm speaking on behalf of her. Okay. Uh, you know, she had been praying for receive a tongue, but tonight, you know, God gave a new tongue. So, she's very happy. She was filled with the Spirit tonight? Uh, sorry, what was it? What happened? She received the gift of tongues? Is oh, that yeah, yeah, she received a gift of tongues. Praise God. Wow. <laughs> wow. Anybody else here who felt the Lord's touch on their physical body? Yeah, yeah, up here. Ro, right here. Thank the Lord. What happened? Um, when I was up front, um, I felt like I was completely just drained. And all of a sudden, I just started giggling uncontrollably. But did, did you get healed tonight? Yes. Of what? I have chronic migraines and insomnia, and I don't And what happened? What did you feel tonight? I didn't have a current migraine, but I just feels like I'll never have one again. You felt the Lord's power come on you? Thank the Lord. I, I want, listen, thank God. I only want to take testimonies where you felt the Lord touch your body and change the condition. So, anybody else here? Yes, thank, look at all these hands. Take him right there with that green beanie. I think it's a green one. Yeah, yeah, right there, Raul, with the beanie. Go to him, sir, if you could. What happened? Um, this happened in the time you came to Pasadena. Okay. I had a thyroid, adrenal gland, nervous system issues. I had anxiety so bad that if I didn't take these homeopathic herbs, I would like want to crawl into a ball and just die. And I got up that night and nothing happened right away, but slowly through the, the next few months until last month, mm -hmm. I have been able to get off all of them and I haven't paid, I was paying $250 a month for these herbs. It just sucked. I was, my girlfriend called me a squirrel with these herbs. Like it was so bad. And so for the, since we've been, since we came to Pasadena, between then and now, you've been completely I'm fine. I'm no longer, I, I literally want to take all the, the remaining ones and just give them back to the wow. doctor because I don't need them anymore. Mm. Wow. Yeah, there were some other, thank God. There were some other hands over here. Put them back, a few of you raised them right, right in here. Yep, there we go, this is the section, yeah. Right there, Raul. Yes. Hi. Um, what happened? I, I had a brain injury uh, 12, almost 13 years ago, and uh, it changed my everything. <laughs> I had to learn how to do stuff over. And when I was going to take the, the, the blood, uh -huh. I saw like ner all my neurons, all the dendrites, like everything that's in your brain, you know, all those dull things. Yeah. And I just saw the blood going like over everything. What did you feel? What did you feel? I, I, I feel like how I used to feel before. Wow. Like, clear. Thank you, Lord. You're right behind her there, Raul. Yeah. Yeah, that with the lady with the dark hair, Raul. Yeah, right there. Yep. 
What happened? Hi, um, I've been suff I used to suffer from Tourette's syndrome since I was in sixth grade, so almost 10 years. Mm. And it, I used to have involuntary sounds. I would even hit myself. And I was unaware of the spiritual realm and how that could be manifested What in happened me. tonight? And tonight, all the involuntary movements I've always tried and kept in my body always transform into tightness all around my neck, my back. And even when I sleep, I would have convulsions. And tonight, after communion, when you said to move in faith, it's the first time I've never, I haven't felt the tightness in my back in for your whole almost life? 10 years. Your whole life? Almost my whole life. Yeah. Come on, guys, give the Lord praise. Thank you, Jesus. Behind her. What happened? I've been suffering from migraines since I was a little girl, and I never thought that they would go away, and they would get so bad to the point where I would throw up, or I would have to sleep under my pillow. What happened tonight? And when I received the blood and the bread, God just, his peace just went over me. And then when you said the word oil, I just felt drips of oil all over my head. And he told me that I don't ever have to worry about migraines again. Amen. 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 Anybody in here? Raul right there. Yeah. What happened? I've been suffering from a lot of anxiety that causes a lot of pain in my heart. And for the first time... Like tightness feel, of the chest? Yeah, yeah. And for the first time, like, I feel calm and loved. Like, did I you feel, feel so that cool. tightness release? Yes. When did that happen? When I was giving, or when I was taking the blood of Christ. Wow. You know, guys, we, we have not, as a church, we have not received communion properly. And now we're discovering the beauty and power of receiving communion properly. Anybody else? Where are you, Carson? Okay. Okay, let's go over here. Yeah. What happened? Okay. Just a few days ago. Turn oh, that mic on. Check, check. <laughs> Is it under? <laughs> Thank God for Carla. All right. Okay, just a few days ago, I, with my new kitchen knives, Christmas gift, I sliced clean off uh, this side of my finger okay. just a few days ago. I, this morning getting dressed, I can't, if my shirt would even touch it, it would be excruciatingly painful. I, I felt like God was going to heal me when I came in here tonight. So when she prayed for me, this, Who I don't prayed know, for her, you? Ne this woman next to me prayed for me. When She's she like, said, when you said, stretch forth your hand, like the like a story in the Bible. <laughs> um, and I, a few nights before this accident happened, I had been worshiping and praying in the spirit and I kept hearing that scripture, stretch forth your hand, that word stretch forth your hand. And I just began to sing it out for a half an hour, stretch forth your hand. And when she said that, I stretched, I, I could not touch it. I could not bend it. Whoa, it's, hold on. So I pulled up. You couldn't bend it? No, not at all. Like, I couldn't, you I could, needed you, help could, You could not bend it today? No, not at all. Like, so before service, you could not bend it? I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't bend it even during the service. Uh, and when, she, when I stretched, there was faith to stretch it out because I could not move it at all. Yeah, painful even for my, trying to put my shirt on if it would touch it. When it did that happen? When just, did she tell you to do that? Oh, when we were praying for healing. Praise yeah. God. It's Thank like you. Guys, these are the <laughs> so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can we thank him? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Just close your eyes for a moment. Why don't you all stand, actually? I want you to, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to lift your hands by faith. And I, I thank the Lord for every healing. I know we didn't get to them all, but I'm going to ask him now to anoint your hands. 
so that this region would be so filled with the light of Jesus that the sick would come to be healed from all over the world. Stretch forth your hands. Father, let the power of the Spirit come upon your people and begin to release the gifts of healing to your body. And let them feel your tangible power upon them. Raise up a Jesus-loving healing army here. And do mighty things in this area, Lord. He, I know you hear us. Do mighty things here. We thank you for every soul, every person filled with the Spirit, and every person healed. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we give the Lord all the praise? Come on, give the Lord all the praise. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give the Lord all the praise, all the praise. I know, I know it's late, but we should go out singing. I'm gonna ask the team to lead us in one song. Give the Lord the praise just one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Aaron, it's all yours. Come on, guys. Go ahead. No false humility. Go. Let's go. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord.
His praise aloud. Awake, my soul, and sing, sing His praise aloud. Sing His praise aloud. Hopefully we see you next month. All right, love you so much. God bless you. God bless you. We believe that the nations will descend on this land. That the sick will be healed here. That the lost will be saved here. That the presence of the glory of God will rest here. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down that the mountains might shake at your presence, that the gospel will go forth from here, shaking the earth for the glory of God, that the presence of Jesus Christ would dwell among us. Here we will enter into the peace of your presence. Here we will remain. Jesus said, remain in me and I in you. Here we will remain. This is holy ground. Where only one thing is needed, Jesus. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped here. May his word be taught in clarity and love here. As we tell the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works he has done. May the generations come to find him here. To find Jesus here. Here. Together we will build the house of God and a home for his people.